my fabulous 133 and welcome to another episode of Lindsay's Library. Today I'm going to be reading chapter 15 of Ella Enchanted, written by Gail Carson Levine. Let's get started. I sobered quickly. What was I going to do with them? How could I arrive at Uaxi's farm with eight ogres in tow? My situation hadn't improved significantly. I was still alive, but not for long. I would have to sleep eventually. Then they'd awaken and remember their true hunger. A twig snapped behind me. I turned and saw a vision. Six knights carrying rope strode toward me. Led by a tall young man, visions don't snap twigs. And the young man was Shar. He saluted me, but his eyes were on the ogres, uncoiling a length of rope. He knelt over Seif and began to bind his ankles. The ogres slept soundly, but they were not unconscious. As soon as he felt the cord tighten, Seif woke with a roar, which shrank to a purr when he saw Shar. What an honor, your highness, but why do you bind an ally? He reached down and loosened the rope. That was proper. Shar shouldn't have been fettering his friend. But Shar pushed Steve's hand aside and tightened the rope again. How could he be so cruel? The knights had begun to bind the other ogres, who were also stirring. Steve tried again. Prince, I would sacrifice my life for you, and you treat me so rudely. Still, Shar paid no attention. I watched stupidly while Seif's feet lashed out. Shar reeled back, losing his grip on the rope. Seif rose and kicked the tether away. The knights hadn't made much progress with their binding either. Everywhere they were doing battle. An ogre knelt over one fallen knight, about to sink his teeth into his shoulder. The knight twisted away, gaining a few seconds, but the ogre was turning toward him. Shar regained his feet and drew his sword. He and Seif faced each other warily. Shar spoke to me, his voice oddly loud. Can you tame them again, Ella? If not, run and save yourself. The question cleared my wits. Seif, Mish, ogre friends, I called in ogreys. Why do you wish to destroy your benefactors? They have food for you, but they cannot give it to you until you do what they want. The ogres stopped clawing and biting and pounding and lunging and kicking and looked at me trustfully. Would you like to, to know what the food is? I asked. Please, Seif said. The treat they have for you is a dozen baby giants, only six months old. They all, they all smiled beatifically. But these friends can't bring, can't bring the feast unless you let them tie and gag you. When they bring out the infants, they'll remove your bindings. So seat yourselves and hold out your arms and legs. They will be gentle. Only Mish remained standing, looking dazed. Sit, Seif commanded. Mish sat. The tying and gagging was completed quickly. Then the ogres were bound together. Treatment they endured cheerfully. Ella. Shar swept a deep bow. He'd grown taller. How did you tame the ogres? His voice was too loud again. I'm skilled at tongues and I can't hear you. Oh, I forgot. He extracted something from his ears. Beeswax. That's why the ogre's magic had no effect on him, on you. Once we sight the ogres, we always put the wax in. The danger is being caught unawares. Shar said that one of the knights, acting as a scout, had seen me. He reported.
reported that a band of ogres was about to eat a maiden when she talked them to sleep. How did you do it? I told them about finishing school, and they began to snore. Truly. Shar stared at me, then laughed. It was delightful to make him laugh. He was always so surprised. How did you really do it? He persisted. I spoke to them in ogrees, and I imitated their oily way of talking. I didn't know if I, was, if I would succeed. They had already parceled me up. I knew which one was going to eat every bit of me. Seif, that one wanted my leg. Shar moved his own right leg. How did they come upon you? I told him I had run away from finishing school. They caught me when I left the elves. They ate the pony the elves gave me. I shuddered. Was finishing school so wearisome that you had to run away? He asked. Very wearisome. And see what it's done to me? I can no longer break a set of dishes by accident. Now I can balance all of them on my head and stroll through Frau without dropping a single one. I have many accomplishments. Are you proud of them? He was alarmed. I nodded solemnly. I wanted to make him laugh again. Would you like to know more? He shrugged, disliking the topic. I went on anyway. To begin with, I could teach these boorish ogres how to eat properly. I seated myself on a large rock. Observe. I plucked an imaginary napkin out of the air, shook it twice, and placed it on my lap. Very ladylike, Char said politely. I shake the napkin twice. That's important. Why? Mice? Char smiled. There are no mice in our court napkins. You are thinking of spiders. The prince contradicts a lady. I picked up an imaginary fork and began to saw an imaginary food. Your meat is tough. You have low regard for our cooks. Not at all. It should be tough. Don't you know why? Tell me, it is mutton. Am I not using a mutton fork? Our manners mistress will believe you're an imposter if you don't recognize a mutton fork when, when I don't see one. He was laughing. It could only be a mutton fork. How so? See how my fingers are bunched together at the top of the stem? I reached up and caught Char's hand. It was square and large. I extended my index finger. My finger is the fork, and you grasp it so. I arranged his fingers around mine. His grip was firm. That's the only correct way to hold a mutton fork. A trout fork is managed differently. I turned his hand over to demonstrate. Angry red welts ran across his palm. The rope burned you. He pulled his hand away. It's nothing. One of the knights is a healer. What else did your manners mistress teach you? I wanted to examine the burn more closely, but I continued. Manners mistress knew your father's opinion about everything. She said he would exile any subject who ate blanc manche from a soup bowl. As a result of her instruction, I could never make such a mistake. Does my father have a special spoon for raspberries and one for blues blueberries? Certainly. Why wasn't I informed? You should hire manners, mistress. She would die of delight to serve a prince. I went on to, de to describe all our mistresses. Riding mistress was the only one who taught anything worth knowing, I concluded. Although it is helpful to know the proper way to behave, so one can decide whether or not to be proper. On the word proper, Shar started. I should have introduced you long ago to my knights. He called them. Friends, John, Aubrey, Bertram, Percival, Martin, Stephen. Meet our ogre tamer. She's the last I told you about, the one who speaks gnomic. He had told them about me. I curtsied. We wondered when you would remember your manners, the one named Stefan said. 
Safe made a garbled noise through his gag. For a moment, I had forgotten him. Char went to the ogres, and I followed. So much as you are our friends, so much are we your friends, he said. But we won't kill you unless you force us to. For an instant, Seif looked dumbstruck. Then he began to struggle violently against his bonds. The, o the other ogres did likewise, and shrieked through their gags as well. The ropes held, and they quieted slowly. Seif glared at me with such rage and hate that I fell back a step. I held his gaze, however. You are never going to eat me, I told him in ogreese. I am not an it, and I am not your dinner. And how do you like being tricked into doing what you don't want to do? Telling them felt wonderful. I smiled at Char. For some reason, he blushed. While Char and I addressed the ogres, the knights were busy setting out lunch for all of us. When we were seated, we delayed our first bite until Char began to eat. It was so natural to him, I doubted he noticed. Over traveler's bread, cheese, dried meats, and sweet cider, he told me about his mission to help King Gerald. The king will be glad to see this lot. Eight ogres and no injury to us. Sir Stefan nodded at the ogres, who were struggling anew at the side of our meal. He'll be interested to learn that humans can use their magic against them, Char said. At least Ella can, whenever he finds out. Sir Bertram frowned. How will we convey them to King Gerald? No need for your melancholy, Sir Bert, Sir John said, with his maid's help. We just caught eight ogres. Six knights never did that before. We'll think of something, Char said. They'll have to be fed. Sir Bertram reached for the bread. And you're the best hunter we have, Sir Bert, Char said. And the knight's expression lightened. Ogres can move quickly, Sir Martin said. It shouldn't take too long to reach the king. I've been told they can outrun a horse, Sir Stefan added. A centaur, too. Even a heart. While Char and the knights discussed ogre transport, I thought about the wedding and despaired of getting there in time. It was three days from now, and I was even farther from the giants than I had been when the ogres had captured me. If I walked, I would arrive weeks late, and then I remembered Nisha's order not to run away. I could not leave anyway. Sir Bertram's gloomy voice pen penetrated my thoughts. We'll have to drag them. And how can we do that? The young lady can tell them to go wherever we say. Sir Aubrey said. She can come with us and keep them biddable. Let the prince tell, tell us what to do, Sir Stephen said. He knows. Char spoke confidently. You, Stefan, will escort the Lady Ella to her destination, wherever that is. Martin and Percival will ride to my father for assistance. Sir Bert, Aubrey, John, and I shall take turns hunting and guarding the ogres. We'll put the wax back in our ears when we are within earshot of them, in case their gags slip. I'd rather stay with you, lad, Sir Martin said. You and Percival are our best scouts. We'll depend on you to get through quickly, Sir, Mar Sir Martin nodded. The maiden will be safe with me, Sir Stefan vowed. I'll, unless he talks her to death, Sir Aubrey interrupted. You don't know him, lady. His speech stops only when the stars shine green in a yellow sky. He'll be a better companion than ogres, Char said. But Ella, why didn't you go back to Frill when you left finishing school? My father is training at, trading at a giant's farm, where a wedding will take place soon. He wrote that giant's weddings are interesting. I thought I'd join him there. Char marveled. You put yourself in such danger in order to see a wedding? He thought me a fool. Sir Bertram spoke. It's fortunate that all the maidens in Kyria do not decide to travel by themselves. We have enough work... We have work enough without having to rescue them. 
If all the maidens in Curia could tame ogres, Shar said, we would have much less to do. Perhaps not such a fool after all. After lunch, Sir Stefan mounted his horse, and Shar lifted me behind him. As soon as he did, my curse caused complaints began. In a moment, I was going to fall off the horse. The curse wasn't going to let me abandon the ogres. I don't like to leave you in danger, I said, starting to dismount. Go with Sir, Steph Sir Stefan, said Char. We won't come to harm. It was an order. I could go. My symptoms stopped. Char caught the horse's bridle. Will you soon be in frill again? If father doesn't send me back to finishing school. And if he doesn't want me to travel with him. Why did he want to know? Did he want me to be? Why do you ask? He didn't answer directly. I should be back shortly. These maneuvers never last long. He spoke as though he'd been on thousands. Perhaps I'll see you soon then. And you can tell me about the other ogres you catch. Perhaps you can teach me how to tame an ogre. Abdon Singh, I said, that's farewell. It sounds evil. It is, I answered, and we parted. And that ends chapter 15 of Ella Enchanted, written by Gail Carson Levine. I hope you have enjoyed this episode of Lindsay's Library. If you did, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And also, if you want, please be sure you can check out my links down in the description below. The first of which is for my affiliate with So Sick Clothing. There's a promo code through them that will get you 15% off site-wide. That promo code is... Ogres15. And there's also a promo code for, for my merch on Teespring that, that will get you $5 off through October 31st, 2020. That promo code is... Boo2020. And the rest of my links are my website, my social media, all those good little things. Thank you for watching, and above all else, stay fabulous. Bye!